Hi guys, this is Jennifer Linderman and I am here giving a lesson today on how to draw this super cute rabbit named Rambo. And you can print off your own picture from your home computer in the same way. So what I have here is, you'll notice this four by four grid. So um, there is this app and it's called Painting Grid Maker. And if you download it, you can uh, basically apply this grid to any photo that you have. And then what you can also do, do from there is it will shoot out another um, grid just without the photo so that you can kind of use this grid as a template. And so um, when I printed it out, it had like this same, you know, extra space around the photo, but I just cut it off. And so then what I did is I, so this is my paper and I already sketched out Rambo on there using the grid. So I, before I did that though, I put this template down. I put it in the place where I wanted it to be. And then I just took a ruler and made little tiny little sort of notches all the way around, you know, where the rows and the columns come off the paper. And then I took the template off and then I just connected the lines. And from there, I was able to then use the grid as sort of a reference uh, for the drawing. You can either use the grid or you can actually not use the grid and just use the, you know, um, I mean, the, the way that I normally do it actually is not with a grid, but it's more about shapes. So for instance, I, you know, look at this cute little rabbit and right here, it's kind of like a circle, right? And then his body part here is even like another circle. And then right here is sort of like an ovally shape. So, and his ears are also like that too. So you can do it like that. Um, that's just, it'll take a little bit more time, but it's a little bit more organic. Um, otherwise, if you feel more comfortable using the grid, the grid is a great way to sort of try to learn about negative space. And negative space is the space all the way around this positive space. So we, we kind of think of the rabbit as being the positive space and everything around it as negative space. Um, so for instance, I would look at this, these angles here. Let me draw it out for you. I don't know if you can see. So like this here. All the way around. All the way around Miss Bun Bun here is negative space, right? So you can see that when I'm starting to put in my sketch here, I'm also trying to look at the same negative space that is in that same box. So I, I, this is why I numbered these boxes, one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four on this side so that I can pay attention to the negative space and make sure that when I'm drawing the positive space, that I'm paying attention that it has the same, you know, angles and what have you are around the contours. Um, so yeah, you can do it like that if you so desire. There's also another way of doing it is if you had your picture and then this is technically tracing paper. Um, well, I use it like tracing paper, but it's actually technically this paper, it's vellum paper, and it's um, from Canson. And so I'm trying to explain to you guys about how to use this uh, vellum paper. So you'll see when you open it up, it's see-through pretty much, right? You can draw on this actually and do other things like in marker and pencil and stuff, but I use it 
more light tracing paper just because it's nice and thick. And so another way to use this is like I was saying before, is you have your picture and then you put the tracing paper on top of your picture and then you use your pencil and you just very pretty lightly with a 2H. So this is a 2H pencil. It's um, the H is for hard, hardness of the lead, which means that um, it will leave a lighter mark behind. And so I just went in and sort of demarcated all of these like contour lines, like the, where the, sort of like where the separation um, of the fur layers are. And then I just went all the way around and traced out this guy all the way around. Then, then what you do, this is how you transfer your um, trace drawing. Then you take your, you put your photo aside. And actually what I did is I put a little F here. If you guys can see that F means front because what we're going to do is a series of two more times tracing. So you want to be sure you know which is the front or top side. So then you flip it over and on the back side of your drawing, you're going to retrace the lines that you see coming from the front. So I'm, I'm not gonna do this for you, but I just wanted you to know the steps because I already sketched it out using the grid. But anyways, this is a, the way you transfer drawings from tracing paper. Um, so what you can do then is just retrace. You're gonna take your pencil and actually what you should do is you'd a, use a um, softer lead, which is uh, this 2B pencil because the softer lead will um, be more easily transferable. And so then you will, like I was saying, retrace over every single line that you see from the front. And that's your number two time. Then you're going to turn your paper back over. This time, make sure you have the surface facing up that you want your final drawing to be on. Position your drawing exactly where you want it. Um, and then you will press down pretty hard uh, from the front and go right over those same lines again. And what's gonna happen is those, those lines from the front, because you've already added graphite on the backside, those lines that you're pressing down from the front is gonna press the graphite that's on the backside of the paper. It's gonna press it into the paper. So I can kind of show you actually it didn't do any drawing on the back, but I can sort of really quickly maybe just do this ear here so you can kind of see what I mean. So I'm just going over this that ear there. So then I would turn it over. So this is the front side. Again, I know that because I have this little F down here that lets me know that's the front. Then you're going to go right over those lines press pretty hard because again you're trying to press transfer or press that graphite from the back side you want to put that directly onto the surface of your paper now so you're going to go all the way down like that and then look at that when you remove the paper there is your transferred ear you see that so that is a pretty cool way of transferring your drawing. Um, so what we are going to do actually now that I've already sketched this guy out, um, not, it's not exactly just like the photo is, but it's close enough for me. So what I'm gonna do is just for this um, for this class, I'm going to use um, this Micron um, ink pen. It's permanent, so um, any water or wet media can go right over the top of it. And it's uh, the um, nib sizes zero to it. They have all these different, there are all these different sizes, 005, 01, 03, 04, 05. And you can get really a wide range. Um, but this is just one of my favorites, I guess. 
uh, so you can watch me as I can. Uh, so right now what I'm going to do is go over these graphite lines with the ink pen. So you can start wherever you want. I guess I'm just going to kind of start here. And I, I actually use my photo as reference in case there's anything I kind of missed. I, I still am looking at my drawing the whole time. Um, so there are some sort of interesting tricky bits. So this up here is actually part of his ear. And whenever I'm doing the fur that's kind of coming around, like where you see it's like sort of jagged and stuff, make sure you also do that with your ink pen because if you just did did a solid line it's going to be really hard to go back and add in these little you know jagged fur fur lined edges so anyways you can it's just something to be aware of i notice this one this little shape actually comes from behind it's nice to kind of make these little demarcations um, or separations in the fur. I'm not gonna draw in every single, you know, fur piece of fur that's here because that will like drive me insane. And it would probably do the same for you. It's just enough to sort of hint at there's, you know, volume there, or there's a, you know, an underlying bone poking these um, other for layers upwards. So I like to always think about the anatomy beneath the animal. So um, it's kind of interesting to actually look at the bone structure of basically anything. If it's like a, you know, something that has like a skeleton that you can um, look up, it's sort of pretty helpful to take note of that as you're you know, making your drawing, because then it kind of makes more sense to me, like, oh, right, that's why, you know, that's why the fur is, like, more um, separated here, because, you know, there's a bone there that's poking out, or, yeah, just stuff like that. I like to kind of remind myself um, what's there. So, yeah. So here I'm just quickly kind of, you know, going through here and retracing my steps. Literally. Um, and again, this is more loosely based I do a lot of work that's really detailed also, but in this case, I'm um, Rambo is going to be a little more, more loose. And that's the fun about mixed, being a mixed media artist. I can kind of just, you know, decide, do I want this to be really fine detail or do I want this to be more loose? Um, Pretty fun, fun to be an artist. So, and I, I actually do use the pen to, so here you'll see these pencil lines is, is where I have blocked out like color changes in the fur. So for instance, like here, the darker browns with the lighter rounds, all of these little spots, I'm actually gonna draw around them with this ink pen. It's just more fun when I, cause I'm gonna go back over um, the ink work with a sort of water brush, watercolor brush. And that will go over this stuff really nicely. Okay. So yeah, this sort of takes a little bit of time, which is why I uh, pre-sketched it out for you because 
watching me do all of that would have taken a lot of extra time. Um, so notice the little edge here. This is where the cheeky bits is what I like to call them. Come. All right, and these cute little mouth opening here. Uh huh. More little sort of fur fur bits. I can't tell if that's a spot. I think it is. I'm just gonna treat it like it is. Um, eyeball. Can't forget that. Like the most one of the most important okay and then I like to use the pen to kind of outline where the highlight of the eye is going to be so I don't accidentally go over it um, it's not let's see I notice there's another change here in, um, it's not that big a deal if you cover up those highlights because you can go back in with like a white colored pencil or a um, acrylic marker or a gel gel pen. They work great too. Okay, so I think I'm going to call it done. So that's Rambo right now. So now don't forget to erase your grid. That is super important because if you leave the pencil grid behind. Um, not all media covers it up. Paint wood and um, some other sort of more opaque um, type media wood, um, but even color pencil, even though it's opaque, it actually will mix with the graphite and make your stuff look really greasy and muddy and dirty and then you'll, you won't be able to fix it and you'll cry. So I'm going to go ahead and erase the grid now before I forget. And try to make sure that your um, your eraser is clean because a lot of times I've used a dirty eraser and gotten junk on my drawing. So I'm just going to um, go through and then you'll see that the Lines now are also not so um, strong. They're not so dark. So sometimes the eraser actually erases part of the ink. So it's up to you if you want to go back in and darken up stuff. I probably will do that at the end because sometimes <coughs> when I go over um, when I go over the stuff here with my, you know, brush brush markers and stuff like that, it it also covers over a little bit of the ink work. And then sometimes I want to go back in and, um, you know, sort of refine or redefine those things. So, and when you're making these, the initial grid be use a really light hand if you can just try to make really light um, marks because and you don't want to press down too hard either because it will leave grooves in your paper and then if you're gonna go over it with color pencil or something like that it'll show up and then you're gonna cry again and you know what Crying and art just don't mix. All right, so I'm just gonna go over a few of these supplies. So now you can see grid is erased. You can still kind of see a little bit of it. Doesn't bother me because for the most part that's gonna get covered up. Um, first thing that I'm gonna explain are these water brushes. These are really awesome. So these work 
with, you can actually use these with regular watercolors, or I use these all the time with uh, my other media that can be um, sort of like reconstituted with water um, or ignited with water. So for instance, these are, um, this, these are ink pencils. Also watercolor pencils would work with those um, water brushes. So let me not get too confused here. I'm just gonna show you how these water brushes work really, really quickly. So this guy is full of water on the inside. You might be able to see the little bubble of water. You'll take off the lid and make sure you have some um, paper towels because I'm gonna kind of try to show you. I don't know if you can see. <laughs> How do I do this so you can see the water? Anyways, I don't know if you saw that, but it's coming, it came out of the tip. So if you just, you know, turn it like upside down like this and then you squeeze at the middle part here, right? There's like a little bladder there. You press and then the water will come out. So that will work really well with some other things we're gonna use really quickly. So I have probably like, oh, five or six. Well, I actually have like 30 or so of these because I teach art to kids and so they get to use them. But you can see how the brush tips vary in size. So this is like one that would be used for like fine detail maybe. And then this is a little bit bigger here. Um, this is a technically a flat brush. It's been a little bit used, as you can see. Um, and then this is another similar size to the other ones. But yeah, they're kind of like paint brushes, but they're pretty fun. You can take them with you when you travel. Um, so the first order of business, actually the next order of business is like what I was talking about before. These are called Derwent Ink Tents pencils. These are one of my all time favorites. So instead of it being like watercolor, um, this is actually ink inside. So once you lay it down and um, get it going with the water, it actually becomes permanent, which is really cool because then you can go on top of it. It's not like watercolor where with watercolor, once you put down one layer and then if you come in and put another layer on top of that, it can disturb the layer underneath it if you're going watercolor to watercolor. So watercolor, that's another reason why they're very sort of, you know, it's difficult to use. Um, but with these guys, since after they're dry, they're permanent, you can actually go on top of it with either more ink, or you can go on top of it with paint, or you can go on top of it with color pencil, wax pastels, pan pastels, you know, whatever. Anything will go on top of the ink tense layer because it's permanent, it is not going anywhere. So those are really cool. And just so you can see, this is sort of like my little cheat sheet. So these colors here and here are the Derwent ink tents. So that's what it looks like after I hit it with the water brush. Um, the other thing I'm gonna to use today are these Tombow markers. And anybody who knows me knows how much I love my Tombow markers. So these are water-based and they look, one end looks like that, like a brush. And then the opposite end um, is like a fine marker. So that gets on, you can use that for like finer details. And those guys, you can kind of see the difference between the ink ones and then the watercolor, um, the water brush markers. They definitely have a more watercolor feel to them, right? So we're gonna play around with a couple of those. And then I have some color pencils that I'm going to use probably later. This, these are Prismacolor um, color pencils. And these are my favorite type of um, color pencil. They're more, more wax-based than oil-based. Um, and I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, I love Prismacolors just because they are really smooth and creamy and they blend well. So 
color pencils, that's a whole other class right there. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do now is kind of look at my reference photo here. And I am going to start blocking in where the darker colors are. So what I am going to do is probably start with my mustardy color. And I'm going to go in here. So right above his um, eye is sort of like a lighter color. And these feel just like colored pencils so you can just I'm going in sort of like this um, oval oval shape is how I that's how you can blend stuff sort of seamless without having those lines sometimes you want to see the lines but in this case I'm just going to see if I can have a more um, sort of light and softer feel so I'm just sort of like covering covering the space by going um, back and forth in this sort of like oval shape. Um, also over here, same kind of deal. It's not going to look like this for very long. This is the initial step of, yeah, blocking in color. I see a little bit of this here. Um, that's that. Then I see some of it on the outside of this guy. Up here. A little bit on the nose. Right. Um, and a lot of this stuff is... It's all about the layers. It's going to be like layered up with other colors. So yeah, it kind of looks like sort of patchy right now, but it'll be blended with some other stuff later. So I'm kind of just taking a look around and adding in some color patches blocking in some colors. And I mean, this bunny is gonna be pretty patchy anyway, so yeah. So this is the a uh, little bit darker color, it's called Willow. Uh, let's see where I wanna go. I'm gonna go, let's see a little bit over here, a little bit over here. I hope you guys can see. Um, and again, it's like not perfect. I'm just trying to get some, you know, give it some interest, I guess, right? Da, da, da. See, that goes there. A little bit here, maybe. And all this is going to be like, you know, blended down with the water brush. Not the watercolor marker, but the water brush, the brush that just has the water in it. Then I'm going to take this dark chocolate one, and this is where I'm going to make those separations a little bit more evident. I know it looks like black right now, but it's just a really dark, like, chocolate brown. Okay. And it's a, it's, it's good to sort of, like, leave a little bit of, like, I'm leaving some of the white of the paper because that's where, when I use the brush, the water brush, it's going to go and fill in. So you don't want to, like, fill in completely everything because then you won't have any place to sort of disperse you know because you want to have like value which is like you know difference in tone like from light to dark so you want to have a good 
sort of variation in that. This is kind of like, you know, coloring a little bit, honestly. And I'll just put in a few little patches here. So you want your eye to, you know, look around here. And some of the brown is darker in areas, so and then some of it is lighter in areas. So you want to just, you know, take a look around. I mean, we're basically just coloring him in like he is, right? And it doesn't always have to be exactly the same color. I like to play around with color too. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is take this sort of like pinky, it's called fuchsia, and I'm just sort of noticing a little bit under his, his mouth here, it looks a little pink, over here is a little pink. Just, I'm gonna put like little pink patches around. And I'm not gonna, this is gonna be pretty light because I don't want it to overpower the piece when I, you know, put my, water to it. You'll see how much it changes when we add the water. So this is kind of like a little shading here. And then down here. Right? I'm just kind of looking around. And I just think it's going to be a fun color in here. A little bit here, sort of like, it's kind of like the, so the bunny surroundings, it's sort of like a brownish tone, but it has this like sort of pinky highlight to it and I feel like the the light bouncing off because he's so white is giving him sort of this pinky reflective light. And that's that's actually a really cool effect. And even th maybe there's not pink in certain areas, I'm just gonna kinda put it in there because I can, and it's fun. Okay, so um, I had this yellow out. I'm just gonna put in a little bit. So here, this looks a little yellowy. And then you have to think about how your colors are gonna blend, right? When you get this sort of yellow and pink together, you have to think about how these colors are going to blend when they come together with some water. So this is just little, it's subtle, but you'll be able to pick it up. Okay, and this is, this is kind of just to sort of like, you know, highlight the, the highest areas of the bunny's body. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do now is use a little bit of this bluish Tombow um, marker to sort of go through and add in like where some of this like other shading, like other levels of shading. I don't know. This is just something I see because I've been doing this for a while, so I see a, some different colors that maybe some other people do, but I don't know. I think it, it all works out somehow. 
Um, if you accidentally dip your marker into another media that's also like water soluble, you want to um, wipe it off on your paper towel. Like just go like this so you get the, the pigment off from the other uh, media because otherwise it'll, you know, it'll taint your marker there. So you can see how when I'm touching this, the other areas, like the ink tense areas with this Tombow, right? It's making it um, become, well, it's, it's turning it into a watercolor effect, which is what we want. Okay, uh, before we go on, I'm actually going to color in the eye here with this um, this micron ink and I like to get that in with a nice black. So I'm just filling this in. I'm trying to do this so you guys can see without it being in like a shadow. So that is uh, sort of happening right now because of the lighting. I'm in my like, I call it my craft room, but it's in the basement, so there's windows are limited. So yes, I think that looks good that way. He's sort of like just given him life, a little bit of life already. Nice, and you can kind of darken up. So usually what I do is, it's a technique where you squint your eyes and that lets you kind of see the different tonal variations um, in, in value. It lets you kind of see where the darkest parts are, where the sort of mid-tones are, where the lighter parts of the dark are, that's pretty cool. Takes some practice, but um, yeah. Anyways, so what I'm probably going to do is just start, I'm going to hit this with the water brushes and then I'll go back over it um, if needed. Well, it'll definitely need it with some other um, colors. So I'm going to use sort of like a Actually, you know what? I'm going to use this size, like a medium tip. So here we go. And so that I don't make other things dirty, I'm going to use a little paper towel to kind of cover, cover over parts. So. And you have to be careful. So you know, if you don't want, um, what am I trying to say? So these parts are a little bit like lighter, right? And the darker parts. So I'm sort of cleaning my brush off in between. Um, so that it doesn't get contaminated with the darker colors right so because I want to kind of keep these lighter brownie parts light and then I'll go back in with the darker ones so there's another part yeah. 
you just kind of move, you know, you have to kind of work fast a little bit when you, you know, touch it, when you touch the pigment. But I'm just kind of like moving it back and forth, as you can see. And then if you don't want it to go into the, and another color that you just hit with water, you're gonna have to let that section dry. And then you can kind of pull out some of the pigment if you just want like a lighter, a lighter color and leave the dark parts undisturbed in, yeah, is that right? Undisturbed? Yeah, that sounds, it sounds not right, but I think it's right. I don't know, there, there are so many not right things happening in the world right now, it's hard for me to mentally take hold of what everything that's happening so yeah anyways we're not going to think about that right now so now then if I want some of this stuff to sort of have softer edges you can just while it's still wet you can kind of go in there right this looks like it comes in a little bit more here. This too, I'm just gonna kind of go back. Um, yep, now I'm gonna go down here. You can like grab the pigment with the brush and just pull it and then go back and forth if you want. Right, and then if I still have some brown on it and I want it like some of that part to just be brown but light, I can actually tap some part, other part that's, you know, brown, but look how light that is. Like that's cool. Want a little bit of like brown in here. And then it gives that area sort of like a little cool texture too. So that's pretty awesome. I'm just softening up some edges here. And you know, not, not everything here is exactly the way that it's pictured. Um, but that's fine by me. Now I'm gonna go in and do the pinky parts. Okay, so this is mostly the the ink tents. Right? Okay, so now I'm gonna like double check. And I'm just you know, like kind of like just wiggling this around. As you can see, I'm just going back and forth. Now I'm kind of going back around and trying to take a look. So this is sort of where I'm at right now, right? Um, so now I'm gonna kind of hit this, this is the Tombow, the blue part. And that's just, I guess it's a little softer. I don't know, they have, a, it has a similar effect to the pencil. Um, 
but I guess it just, it's, it's less opaque, right? Just like watercolor. It's a little bit more translucent. Um, this part here I'm gonna mess around with. Kind of liking how that looks. This is okay here. This, I might want to put a little bit of that dark brown. So I have this actually really cool, um, it's a palette. Um, it's by Karan Dash, the Ash. And one side is kind of like scratchy and the other side is smooth. Um, so with these, any sort of pencil-y kind of thing, you can rub it back and forth. So this is the Derwent Ink Tense pencil. And then instead of putting the paint directly on the paper, you can actually treat it like a palette and pull it with the water brush right off of your, your palette here. Okay. So I just wanted to show you that. So that's a way of sort of controlling it and not making it um, so like dark. I'm going to actually rub off a little bit of that color too. And then what I'm going to do is sort of like just go under the nose. You see how it's just a little bit like lighter. It's not as right here is where I just put it. It's not as dark as this part here. I just wanted to just give a little, little highlight. I don't know. I feel like, I mean, the, I could play with this all day long. This is why right now is a really good time to get to know your art supplies, because if you have to be at home right now, I don't know. For me, this is, this is what I need to be doing right now. So this is a little bit of the shading and then I can just pull a little bit off of that palette. And if the, you know, if something is too bright for you, like let's say, you know, this pink is too pink, I can just go back in with this brown and kind of tone it down a little bit if that's what I, what I want to do. And I don't know, I like adding these shapes, these little square shapes. I, I don't know. Don't ask me why. I just, it's very satisfying somehow. So this is just a little bit more of the shading. I'm just looking all around here now, noticing this is kind of a cool shading color actually. Now you have to be careful of overdoing things, right? Yes, there is a big fear of that, always. This line here is a little bit darker. So you can use like the tip you want to just do like a, you know, a fine line of something. I'm just trying to, this looks like this connects more over here. So I'm going to try to bring those together. Okay. I think I'm going to make this part a little darker under the ear. You can kind of just tap it in there too with the brush. When it's wet, it's cool. It'll like just spread out like that. I'm going to go in, in here too a little bit. Should have left a little bit of more light there. 
but I'm not sure if I can actually fix that because of the um, the ink tense is in there. But you can kind of lighten it up a little bit. See how I'm just sort of doing that with the brush and sort of lifting it back and forth. You have to be careful though not to pull off too much. I just want to open up a little bit of that light there. Okay. I'm just kind of, um, you know, making some of the, some of those parts seemed a little grainy like this here. Sometimes it's okay for me, but sometimes it's not. Okay, so this is sort of where we're sitting with Rambo. We've um, hit it with all of our different, you know, wet media. Um, and I mean, as it is now, he is looking pretty cute, I think. Right? That's just me. Now, um, I think I'm going to just leave him like that. But I did want to show you something pretty fun. So again, with this tracing paper, I don't know if you noticed, but I drew a little picture of some lettuce and I drew a little um, picture of a carrot. So what you can do, um, also a really fun thing is to just do your initial drawing on this paper because you can do all of your erasing and your scratching and that kind of thing on the this paper so that when you transfer it to this paper, you get a really clean surface, right? So for instance, let's say instead of taking the time to draw like, you know, a million carrots, like let's say I want to give this guy like a pattern of a carrot in the background. So I can cut this guy out pretty close and think about, you know, doing some sort of fun little pattern here. So you could do something like this and then maybe, you know, like it's a little wallpaper action in the background. So what you would do then is that is the front. You can put the F right there. I'm just going to turn this. Actually, I don't want to do that because I don't want to ruin here. I'm going to use this as my surface. Um, so I already drew with graphite on the front. Then I'm going to turn it over, right? And then I'm going to retrace. This is number two. I did that on the first, first for the rabbit, I did that. Now I'm just going over my lines, right? I'm just following, don't add details in at this stage because there's no reason to do that. You can do that on your own on the final. So that was number two. I did the back, this is the front. So now let's say I wanna put a carrot pattern. I'm going to, I'm just gonna, I'm probably not gonna, you know, do the whole thing like the whole pattern is what I mean for you guys, because uh, that would be like another hour. And I just kind of wanted to get through this guy. So now I'm retracing over the lines. Uh, and if your paper is, you're like tracing paper with your image is too wiggly, you can tape it down, right? Because if it slides off, 
at all, right? Then it's going to offset your, your image. So look at that. There is one cute little carrot right there. And you can, sometimes you have to go back over the back and see, you know, and re reapply the graphite. But here, let's see if I can just really quickly maybe get another one in. This one might be a lot lighter. That's okay. We're just gonna Okay. So, there's another one. See that? pretty cute. And then this, this was the, that's the front of the tracing. And now guess what? You get to keep your tracings because you can use this guy over and over and over again. I have like a box of these little tracings and you just cut them out and then, you know, you can put them on something, some other piece of artwork that you want, that you want, you know, vegetation or whatever. Um, yeah, it's, Pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna do one more. I lied, I know I said I was just, I was gonna stop. Or maybe I didn't say I was gonna stop. After this one, I am, I should, probably would have to add more graphite. And I mean, at this stage, I don't really care if it's sliding so much okay so yeah that's that was probably the end of the graphite all right so now i have three cute little carrots and then what i can do is you know go through and add and just this like little repeating pattern in the background which will be really fun and then what I would like to do actually for that guy is I'm going to use my, um, start to use my Tombow. This is a uh, number 985. They don't um, identify their, the markers with names, but rather with numbers. So that's how they do it. All right. So you can just... I'm just going through and um, I don't have a reference in front of me, but I like to leave a little bit of light and, um, but usually for everything that I draw, I do use reference, reference photos because I can't really remember what stuff looks like otherwise. So I'm just kind of going going for it here. Um, and then, you know, you might have wanted to maybe take the pencil lines down a little bit here, meaning erase them so they're not so, you know, apparent. Otherwise, you can go over that with the ink. But if it's not bothering doesn't bother me so much um, because you can actually go over those with pencil, colored pencil, or paint, or ink tents. Yeah. Okay. Now for the greenery, I'm just going to add in this like lighter color, which is number 133. I'm going to do that for the... 
I don't know what you call it, the stems, the leaves, whatever, of the carrots. So this is what we have right now. Then I'm going to put in a little bit different orange. I know it's not very noticeable right now. This is just a little, this is number 985. Okay. And then you are going to take your lovely water brush and your paper towel. And then I'm going to go over it like so. And this, this is the, so that was the Tombow. This is the water brush. Maybe you can kind of see the difference um, with between the ink tents where this is a little more, a little lighter feeling, I guess. I'll do it this way so maybe you can see better. I don't know, you guys. I'm, I haven't done that many videos, so I'm... I hope this is okay for you. Okay. All right. So now I'm actually going to go in with, so I want to show you where we're at right now. So we have this, this cute little guy with the uh, carrot. So you kind of want to let this stuff dry before you add any other things. I'm just going to use a, uh, this is the Prismacolor color pencil just to kind of give some darker colors to the stem, leafy, leaf, leafy area, whatever. Um, you can bring it in here with the scratch little cracks. Okay. All right. You see how that works? Pretty cool. Now then, I don't know if you've seen these guys. These are uh, Stabilo Woody pencils. Um, kids use them a lot. They are so fun. This is what this orange piece right here looks like. Um, it's actually technically a wax pastel and it is water soluble. So you can go in, let's say you wanna add in a little stronger, you know, orange area. Watercolor is cool for like, I like to use it as like a base and then go back in with something else to strengthen it a little bit. Just give it a little punch. So see how cool that is? That just really popped that um, that carrot. At least that's what I think. Right? All right. So now what I am noticing is since we have some blue here, I think blue goes really well. It's a complementary color um, to orange. And so I think I'm going to do a little bit of this um, Tombow in the background for the blue. Um, yeah, so what you can do there is if you're too scared about, like I was talking to you about 
before if, instead of just applying the marker right on the paper which kind of freaks a lot of people out if they're not used to using these Tombow's. The smooth side works really well for that. So you can put it down like this. Okay, then I'm gonna use this flat brush, this guy. I'm gonna get that off. And then I'm actually gonna squeeze the water in and try to spread it around. Oh, now that's interesting. Oh, you know what? This is full of alcohol. <laughs> um, yeah, guess what? This is not gonna work. Okay, never mind. We're gonna use a different one. I filled one of these with alcohol because alcohol is a good uh, blender for colored pencil and I apparently did not take the alcohol out of this guy. And so, yeah, that's what happened there. No biggie. So let's try that again. I'm gonna let that part dry up there. I'm gonna do this again. Sorry guys. You know, mistakes happen, right? Okay, that's looking better. So it's just, it's very light, right? But that's kind of what I wanted. Just a really light application. And be careful about hitting anything that's before it's fully dry because it will just reconstitute with whatever and bring it in bring it into your watercolor play or the other stuff that you're using whatever it is I mean, this, these markers are basically like watercolor in a marker form. And I keep squeezing water out if you feel like it's too, you know, too dry. Just give it a little squeeze and then you can spread that stuff around. See what I mean? So you can go, that's how you can like fill in a background. I guess I'm gonna have to draw a uh, little bird or something over there to cover up that mistake. Or you could make uh, make draw something else on a different piece of paper, um, or just find something collagey and collage cover that up. Collage is great for covering mistakes. Anyways, right? So this is, so basically if I, if I was going to spend my whole time with this, I would just fill this whole thing in. Uh, before I would fill this whole thing in though, I would have put more of these little carrots like all, all around. And um, then I would go around with the, with the markers. And after that, I might have thought about, you can use um, pencils. So like right now, this is not fully dry, um, but you can even use like the side of your pencil and do sort of like cool marks like this. You know what I mean? Like either on top of the underlying layer or instead of. Like either with or without the carrots too. So it's, you know, just kind of up to you how you want to do it. So, I mean, since I have this tracing of Rambo, guess what? I can retrace him again and do this again. So that is another really cool thing about 
making your drawings on those tracings because you can save them like forever and ever and add them to other things. You know, you can use your printer and make them smaller. Um, then you'll have printouts. Yeah, lots of fun things that can happen. So I think that um, for now, I'm going to stop here. I just hope that I gave you an, some good ideas um, of how to keep yourself busy over the coming, coming days. And um, I look forward to seeing what all of you create. Um, take care and stay safe.